Welcome to Crash Course in Adobe Creative Cloud. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup Global. And I'm happy to be your host for today's event. Also joining us today is a preeminent expert in Adobe Creative Cloud, Paul Trani, the Senior Worldwide Creative Cloud Evangelist who is going to be talking to us today about his experience and his passion about helping designers build compelling content using their creativity and new technology with Adobe Creative Cloud. Whether it's using 3D printing, touch devices, or building cutting edge web and mobile experiences, Paul is an award winning designer and an Adobe certified instructor. And he's been doing this for 15 years. So I'm glad to have him here to help share his experience and excitement about Adobe Creative Cloud with you today. You'll also see on the back end Terry McGrath from Adobe. We also are joined by Clint Funk who's from Adobe and who will be our expert on the soup chat immediately following in our forums. And you'll see Sun Park, Karina Zubia, and Ali Bazdikian all from TechSoup who are on hand to help answer your questions and help you with any technical issues throughout the webinar. We at TechSoup are here in our headquarters in San Francisco. Go ahead and let us know where you're joining from. Paul is joining us from Colorado today. Chat in to let us know where you're on the line from. We have about 180 people in the room at the moment, and that number is climbing quickly. While we do that and see where you're all from, a quick agenda look. Uh, we'll do an introduction to TechSoup for those of you who aren't familiar. We'll have a quick couple of polls to gauge your experience using Adobe Creative Cloud. And then we'll talk about the latest in print and web, which is the way that we know that most nonprofits are using Adobe's tools right now. Uh, and so we'll talk about and be able to see in real time some of the great things you can do with Photoshop, Illustrator, Muse, and InDesign. And then Paul will also talk about mobile to desktop workflows. We'll have a few minutes just to talk about the Adobe Creative Cloud offer that's available through TechSoup, have some time for Q&A. And then again, we'll have you join us in our soup chat in the forums immediately after if you have additional questions. So we're here at TechSoup Global, a network of 63 partner NGOs around the world serving 120 plus countries. And we do this all over this map, any place you see dots, serving 615,000 NGOs worldwide to the tune of nearly $5 billion in donated technology products and grants for the social good to non -G nonprofits, libraries, NGOs, foundations all across the board. And I'm happy to have been a recipient of many of those donations at three small nonprofits before I started at TechSoup. You can learn more about our programs at TechSoup.org. Now getting into the topic of the day with Adobe, this is a quick look at all of the different uh, programs that are available in Adobe's Creative Cloud. And you'll see at the top of the page a link to where you can learn about the current offering. We'll talk more about this later on in the program, but if you want to skip ahead and look at that link, you're welcome to go to TechSoup.org slash Adobe to see both the discounted Creative Cloud offer and some donated offers of specific Adobe applications that you can get through our donation program. It includes a lot of different applications that you may already be using like Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign. And for those of you doing video production or audio, work. Like there's just so much in this package. So we won't be able to cover everything in the course of an hour, but we want to make sure that you get a good overview of what the Creative Cloud has to offer. So before we do that, go ahead and click on your screen what is your level of proficiency with Adobe Creative Cloud apps now. And we, we called it Adobe Creative Cloud here because that's what we're talking about today. But maybe you are a proficient user of Photoshop installed on your desktop or InDesign. And so if there's something like that, go ahead and chat into us to let us know. Because we know that people may be a pretty skilled expert in one tool and maybe not in the others. So let us know if there's some other that doesn't fit on this uh, short list of options. A couple of people are commenting that they're skilled at most. We have a lot of people chiming in saying they understand the basics or use InDesign and Illustrator frequently. Thanks for chatting in. We're going to give just a couple more seconds so everyone can participate. Uh, Karen comments, I've hired people that know how to use the program. Totally have been in that boat too. Uh, lots of people said that they use Photoshop and Acrobat on their desktop. and skilled in the desktop or CS version, the Creative Suite version. So this may be the first introduction to the Creative Suite. So I'm going to show the results really quickly, and then I have one other quick question for you before I hand it over to Paul to show us what it's all about. So what is your level of proficiency? 
58% say they understand the basics of some of those apps. So that's good to know. We do have quite a few people that have never used them at all, and a much smaller percentage, 7%, less than 7% that feel like they're skilled at most of these apps. So we will probably spend a bit more time showing some of the cool things that can be done and maybe highlighting some of the, the cool things that you can do with the basics too because it looks like many people are um, basic or below uh, in their skill level. And let's see, have you signed up for Creative Cloud membership at adobe.com yet? And this is just for us to get an idea of who's already using it uh, and who is not, or maybe you've signed up and you haven't actually begun using it yet. Maybe you're thinking about requesting it and haven't gotten there yet. So let us know, and this again helps inform us as your presenters today about where you're at and how you're feeling about it. Lots of people saying that they have a personal membership or somebody comments they have a team account, haven't signed up but used it yet. We know you can't see the chat messages coming in, so we'll try and respond to those individually. And if there's anything useful that you share in the forums, We'll try, or, sorry, in the chat window, we will also try and chat that back out for the full audience if there are useful tips that you guys share. So just to show the results in so far, 42% of you have signed up, 31% uh, have not, and maybe haven't signed up yet, and 18% haven't requested it yet, but maybe you will. So let's go ahead and have our expert today join us on the line. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. We're really glad to have you. Tell us a little bit about Adobe Creative Cloud, and more importantly than that, show us what it can do. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's, that's the plan, guys. Uh, I'm just going to click through a couple slides here. Welcome everyone, and again, it's just a, a pleasure and honor to present to you. Um, going forward, of course, those resources on TechSoup. You guys can follow me online, which is the best way to kind of see the latest. I would appreciate that. Kind of keep the conversation going. Uh, at Paul Trani, T R A N I dot com. So, my, I'll try to speak as clear as possible. Hopefully, I'm not blowing into the phone. I'm going to pick, I'll even pick up my receiver. All right, guys, is this, maybe this is a little better, but this is quite frankly uh, the, best, uh, the best I can do. So, I will be as clear as possible. Uh, if you guys have any questions or if the audio cuts out, just ping me uh, you know, online, paultranny.com, or through Twitter, which would be great. All right, thanks, Karen. Thanks, Dale. All right, guys, let's move on. Because honestly, uh, who, who, who is overwhelmed by all those icons when we showed uh, the Creative Cloud apps or all of those Adobe apps, right? Um, chances are there's a lot going on that you may or may not be aware of, okay? Uh, but at the end of the day, we launched Creative Cloud, which is a couple, probably three or so years ago now. And it was just a way for people to have everything. And rather than me holding on to updates and teasing you with new features from year to year, as soon as things are built, we give them directly to you. Uh, and even performance things, like I can talk, I can talk about performance in Illustrator you know, being e tapping into the GPU now rather than the CPU. So you're using hardware, it being hardware accelerated. Isn't a, a, it is a feature, but it's something you could take advantage of today. And uh, so that's the whole idea around Creative Cloud is to get things to you as fast as possible. All right, so uh, again, it's everything you need to create your best work as it says at the top there, obviously written by a marketing person. I'm not a marketing person. I just want to show you what all this stuff does. I might bring up some other things like Creative Sync. I can talk about uh, Adobe Stock as well. I can get into a lot of these new features which are seemingly kind of overwhelming. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. So at this point, I'm going to share my screen, guys, and we're going to dive right into this. So sorry about clicking through those slides, but I didn't want anybody to go into a slide coma. So uh, nonetheless, let's just make sure uh, I can see chat and all that good stuff. Uh, and let's kind of move on from there. All right. So uh, you guys should actually be able to see my screen now. Let me know if you don't. But Looks good to me, Paul. See my screen. Thank you. 
So literally, guys, when you log in, uh, I don't even know that I'm on an, a, the Creative Cloud site or Adobe site. It looks like it's my site because it gives you your icon and all of your apps and all your apps that you can uh, access. So check this out. This is where I like to go. I log in, right? Uh, let me just turn off those chat notifications. And uh, I can jump into desktop. So I encourage you guys to do this. You'll scroll down. You'll see all of these uh, desktop apps. You guys mentioned Photoshop and Design, uh, uh, Illustrator, things like that. But look at this long list. And I really want to kind of highlight the, the top ones. But you can jump in and see what's new or start to download Photoshop, for instance. Okay. And again, it's all these new features that we have to define by date. Okay? So if you click Download for Photoshop, what's going to happen is it's going to download this desktop app, right? And it will start to install Photoshop. I already have it installed, and then you can go ahead and launch it. Okay? So that's how everything works. And you'll start to use, let me just minimize these two screens, you'll start to just use this more and more as well. Okay? So I can open up Photoshop. We have more than the desktop apps. If I go back into my browser and go back, we actually have uh, mobile apps. So the whole idea of having your assets with you everywhere and really being able to work from anywhere, here are our mobile apps. Okay? So your creativity is going places. So you have Adobe Brush, Shape, all these different apps, and it's really just enabling you to capture colors and shapes uh, from the environment to draw, different things like that, and you can get into more illustration and the layout work. I'm actually going to start with Adobe Comp CC, okay? Because this kind of just kind of shows you that you can create, say, on an iPad, and then you can sync or send this content directly to InDesign. Illustrator, or Photoshop. So I'm just showing you this kind of complete workflow. So what I'm showing you guys right now, as I open up, uh, this is actually my iPad. Okay, so here I am on my iPad. So if you do happen to be you know, in a meeting or just out and about and you want to get started on a layout, you can do that in this case with uh, Adobe Comp CC. So I'm launching it now. You can see a number of like starter apps or examples. So everything from website design, to a print ad, to an app design, or make something custom yourself. So launching, launching Adobe Comp CC, I could start just drawing. Like I know I need a headline, right? So I'll just do like, um, what I'll just do a box with a period after it, and it will give me a headline. I want some body copy. Well, let's just do a box with some lines in it. So lame usually, and boom, it makes me look awesome. I need a big picture over here for this ad, uh, maybe a smaller one. You guys get the idea using Adobe Comp CC. All right, so uh, I can also adjust this content as you'd expect, shrinking that up, maybe moving this down over here, you know, adjusting the depth, changing things like this. You guys get the idea. Uh, you guys might be bored with the fact that I'm using gray boxes. They are you know, more precise than what I can draw, but I can go beyond these gray boxes and I can start using some of the assets in my libraries. So this is where I'm going to mention something called uh, Creative Sync. Okay? And that's just a fancy marketing term for saying, hey, you know what, your assets are going to be everywhere. Because typically if I wanted an image here, I'd have to email it to myself and then download it to my camera roll and add it that way. But quite frankly, I have Adventure Project right here. I can select Adventure Project, and you'll see all of these various assets available to me on my iPad. Okay? So I can select, say for instance, that image and drop it in okay? and do what I want for even this other one. You guys hopefully get the idea. So there's that. Again, this could be any image, obviously, that says Adobe Stock. Maybe I want to change it. I'll change it to something else. And I'll even change some of this text to uh, da -da -da. Uh, da, let's just type in something. Whatever. You guys get the idea. Typing in some text, changing the color. I don't need to get into too much detail here. But what I want to show you is that not only do I have my assets, but I also have uh, character styles available to me as well. So that's actually changing kind of 
uh, in the background, if you will. You can see it change. But all my text or fonts or character styles that I've defined previously are available on my iPad. So I made a quick layout, guys. Check this out. I'm just going to show you that uh, I can send this to InDesign, Photoshop, or Illustrator so I can decide later on, if you're like me and you're indecisive, hey, you can decide later, push it to the app of your choice. I can send this to, say for instance, Photoshop is where I'll send it, and it's going to come through as expected. And this is all free, by the way. Like these apps, all you need is an Adobe ID. So I'm not like, you know, again, I'm not really selling you anything here. I'm just helping you take advantage of what you already have. Now, where did these images come from? Let's go back. Let's go into Photoshop, and we'll just wait. We'll wait for our layout to pop up, by the way. So it will when we get back to our desktop. But take a look right in here. This is probably the biggest and most important thing. If you, guys get, if you guys even forget my name, I don't care. I don't want you to forget about CC Libraries. Okay? And this is that adventure project. In fact, those assets that I was accessing earlier are all right in here. So there's that RAM. So I encourage you to like create a new library, call it, you know, my, you know, my project, creating it. I can take, for instance, uh, you know, this image and drag it in here. And this could be my main, main hero image. And I could even have a logo, for instance. Let me find a logo really fast. You know, let's just take, say, for instance, ooh, never mind. So, like I just mentioned, uh, this is my composition that was made in Adobe Comp, actually popped up on my screen while I was working. So that's what, that's what I was just working on my iPad. So you can see it here it is on my iPad, here it is on my desktop. They're not connected in any way, it's just a send to. So this is a separate file. But the cool thing is, is you guessed it, all this text is editable and changeable and all that fun stuff. So you can change and do what you want and make it as neat as you want, whichever way you want, like I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to impress you with my design skills, and it is not working. But in general, I can make that change. And again, just showing you, you can work from mobile to desktop thanks to Creative Sync. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, what I was working on, which was this. And in fact, I was working on this My Nonprofit Project. And I can have, for instance, a logo or any imagery like this hiker right down here. I can bring him in here. Okay? And this could be another image or it could be anything. But I start to build this library based on different elements. right? Um, and then I can not only have this content available uh, in Photoshop, this content – in fact, I'm going to get rid of this second one – it's also going to be available to me pretty much anywhere. Again, back on mobile, or even if I'm in Illustrator. So I'm going to jump into Illustrator. I'm going to open up that same panel. I'm going to go into my nonprofit project that I was working on, and I can start to you know, work with this content. Okay? So dragging that out, maybe dropping on this image, whatever I want to do, and I can start making the poster. Okay? So again, one layout might be one thing, and then I could have a poster, say for instance, in, uh, in Illustrator. Okay? And the cool thing is, is this stuff is all tied together. Okay? So uh, even if I you know, grab, say for instance, my adventure project, I actually have like a cooler logo right in here. I can drop this on. So this might be the logo that I'm working on uh, for this project. And whether I'm using it in Illustrator or even if I'm using it back in Photoshop, if I drop on that logo, this content is connected. Okay, so let's just scale this up. There it is. And so if this logo changes, in fact, I'll just double click on it. If I change it to something else, it's going to update and change everywhere. So I save that. I close it. You can see it updates here. Let's jump back into Illustrator. Boom, it's updated there as well. So if you could imagine 
just having one set of assets that you update and it updates across every layout, that's pretty powerful. Okay, now what if you're working with other people? Well, hey, we got you covered there as well. Cause check this out right over here. I can select uh, collaborate actually. And with this collaborate function, I can basically send this library to someone else and they will have access to it as well. So if I update the logo, I have the confidence and they can't come back to me and say, oh, I don't have the correct logo. No, you do. Check your library there, buddy. So like again, Clint, Clint, I'm sorry, I don't want to give away your email, but you know, Clint Funk is going to be helping out and moderating uh, questions after the session, which is awesome. I could send this directly to him and he will have access to that same library and we're always on the same page. So that's probably the biggest thing and the biggest thing that's helped me out personally like as a designer, just like it just helps me out, you know, just, just, just no nonsense, really straightforward work you can do. All right, so I've talked about creative sync. I did air quotes there, by the way. Uh, but let's start to work on some of these assets. Actually, even for this asset over here, let's just check, take a look at it. Back in here, um, I'm not crazy about, you know, this this zip line right here, I want to remove it, okay? And this is a common thing you'll, you'll probably want to do. And if you're new to Photoshop, or even if you've been using it a while, chances are you're using some of the content aware technology. Um, so it's content aware will actually, it's aware of the content. So your tools are aware of what's around it. So I could use something like the spot healing brush, okay? And I don't even have to worry about it. I'm basically saying, hey, you know what? I want to erase this. I want to erase this particular image. So let me just increase the size. And, you know, just kind of zip right down here and just, you know, run over it, if you will, to remove it. And then watch what actually doesn't happen there. And some of you that use Photoshop a lot know what, what, what's missing there. What's missing there is the progress bar. I could jump into Photoshop CC 2014 uh, and show you how slow that is because it takes a lot of processing time and actually we cut that time into one-tenth of the time. So it's actually ten times faster if I want to start removing content or moving content around. Okay, so there's no progress bar, guys. I don't, I don't like progress bars. You know what? There's no more progress bars, nor is there a zip line. So of course this guy's getting a little concerned at this point. So let's just, let's just put him out of his misery. <laughs> but that's the content aware technology uh, sort of at work, 10 times faster performance uh, tip as well as, uh, you know, if you're new to Photoshop, you should be using that as well. All right. Some other things that are, you know, again, content aware technology, some things you need to be aware of. You know, I can do a content aware move because I have this dramatic scene Okay, and oftentimes you might need to move some, move these people to make room for other text or whatever the case may be, but I can select them. I'm using content aware move, so it will not only move them, but eliminate uh, them from that earlier position and also gives me the transform tools because we've discovered that after you move something, you often want to scale it and make sure it works well for wherever you're moving it to. So we've thought a step ahead there. We can make them smaller, make the scene look much more dramatic, and again, that's like 10 times faster. Okay, and I can just, I can even get rid of this altogether. Content aware move is right in here. If I do a fill, content aware, boom, get rid of it. You guys get the idea. I can start to work on this image. Content aware move content, scaling it down, dealing with other images. I'm going to do another thing. This is kind of, again, for pro users. I will just brighten up this image. Uh, all right. Um, so here, here's a photo, and a lot of times you want to add focus. And we know that shallow depth of field, like making parts blurry, is a really hot look. And I want to make sure you guys you know, know how to do this uh, in general and show you some of the new tools and capabilities. So for this photo, I actually want to focus right here on the center right here, okay, and kind of blur out because I might put text over here for, uh, you know, a brochure or a flyer or something. So I can go into filter and you have blur gallery effects available to you. 
And just to show you, I can go ahead and do an iris blur because that's going to basically it's a circle blur. I don't know why they call it iris blur. But check this out. I can start to blur out everything around it, and I can adjust that blur, the blur controls, and start to sort of expand this out any way I want or rotate it, whatever I want to do. Okay? So that gives me that very nice look. Uh, we sometimes have the issue of it's almost too smooth because the blur obviously blurs those pixels together. And if you can zoom in here, I'm trying to show you, there's actually a lot of pixelation here. So it doesn't match. The blur doesn't match this pixelation. And again, this is a sort of a pro tip, but if I go back in here to noise, I can add a certain amount of grain to make sure the blur matches the photo. So even if you're using a low res photo or a photo that was once dark like this one, we can make sure it matches up. And that's exactly what I'm doing at that point, hiding her identity and his identity to a degree it looks like. Okay, so take advantage of Blur Gallery. Um, it's right here. I made this a smart object, so it's always going to be editable. So again, just showing some, some quick things. Let me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of focusing on Photoshop, and I'll jump into some other apps. But I want to do, I, I definitely need to do one more thing in here, guys. Check this out. Uh, you know, back to this design that I was working on. So whether it's an app design, maybe it's a print ad and you need to make multiple versions, typically that means multiple PSDs. Okay? So you'll have, to ha you'll have this, you know, if choice number one dot PSD, choice number two, choice 2A, 2B, you know, final, final, final dot PSD, right? And there's like 15 PSD files. Okay? And uh, rather than doing that, what you can do is you can create different versions or different screens in the case of this app design all within one PSD. And what I'm talking about here are artboards. So I'm going to just select these layers because this is just easiest for me to do. You know, I'll, I'll make a design and then I'm like, oh, I would like to make this an artboard because I'd like to have you know, the different screens. So selecting all those layers, right click, and I can make artboard from layers. All right. So artboard from layers, selecting that. We'll call this home screen. Boom, there it is. Zoom out. You can see that that says home. I can take this artboard and I can duplicate it. And we'll call this, you know, hike. Just like that. I can move it over. And now we have the home one and then the hike one. Notice how I have that logo on both. Well, I can drill down in here because I like how everything is nice and organized. I can remove that logo, for instance. And I, I like that Photoshop, it, it, it's hard to screw things up. Because let's say, for instance, let me show you this cool tip, by the way. Oops, sorry. Um, you know, maybe I wanted this logo on this second screen instead. I can take this logo and I can just drag it up into this artboard and it knows and is aware of the previous position and just puts it there. It's like, okay, thank you. You know, same thing if I was to select this logo and drag it over here. It's aware of that second artboard and it will put it in that second, or excuse me, that, that other artboard, the first one right here. So that's what you'll do is you can create multiple layouts just like I have here, multiple layouts, uh, multiple artboards allowing you to create what you want. There's even this little artboard tool behind the move tool. So you can come over here and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to make it an entirely new one, dragging that out. That's the equivalent of you know, making a new page or almost like making a new PSD. And then you can start to add some little elements to it, you know, whatever you want to do. All right. And I, I'm not going to show this because I don't have time and there's too much other stuff to show. Um, and I doubt there's that many people doing maybe, I don't know, maybe you are uh, uh, um, uh, doing this on a, uh, maybe you're making mobile designs or you want to check your website on a mobile device. But I'm going to launch uh, Adobe Preview on my iPad. But basically, this just allows you to preview your designs on a mobile device. That's what Adobe Preview does. So, um, so basically, you have to get the app, install it on your mobile app, or excuse me, on your um, 
uh, on your iPhone, and then you'll be able to preview this content directly on your mobile device. Okay. So that's that. I'm going to move on because there's more I need to talk about. Um, I, I jumped into Illustrator briefly as well. There's Preview CC. I'm not going to worry about covering it. Check it out if you're interested. Um, I mentioned this earlier, like just the speed that uh, Illustrator CC 2015 goes at, for instance. So I can just, you know, easily show you that this is a very complex Illustrator file. Okay, so uh, panning around this and working on this this layout has been difficult in the past. Uh, so preview on CPU, if I do that, it's going to be slower. But if I change this to GPU preview, which is selected by default if you meet the minimum system requirements. But check this out. Now if I want to like, you know, whether it's pan around or zoom in, look at how smooth that is, guys. The redraw is awesome because what are we doing? We're tapping into the GPU. So I can zoom in here. And not only can I zoom in here, I forget the – you weren't able to zoom in this far before. Look, look at how close – I'm getting in on this text, for instance. Um, 64,000 percent is how much I'm zooming in on this file, which was just nowhere near impossible before. Huge thing. All right. Let's move on. In Illustrator, step back a little bit. As a nonprofit, you want to show maybe like sort of your outreach, or chances are you have to show a graph or some sort of chart on donations or who knows what. Uh, you, you can hardly be a graphic designer these days and not have to show a graph of some sort, okay, which are kind of tedious. But I want to show you this. In Illustrator CC 2015 release, the CC Charts tool. Okay, so I need to make a chart. I'm going to select the Charts tool. I'll drop it right in here. And there are my three generic icons just as a, um, a you know, placeholder, right? Well, I want to replace that because again, I'm working on my cool project, and I want to use this, you know, tree. Oh, where did this? Tr where? Oh, let me show you this. So much to show, guys. Um, I can show you Adobe Stock, by the way, so you can purchase images, which is where most of these came from. I can search Adobe Stock, find those images, and either use a placeholder image or the actual one. We'll wait for it to load up. But um, if I'm doing you know, nature, search on nature assets. If I want to use this asset, I can save this directly to my adventure project. Okay? So I'm saving a preview of it to my adventure project. In fact, if we jump over there real fast, coming right over here, adventure project, we'll see it pop up right here. Okay? And I can drop it in and start using it. Okay, in this case, I'm going to put it in the background. Right back there. Okay. And if I ever want to license it, I can use it wherever I want, and then I can turn around and license it when I'm ready as well. Okay. Oh my hold on a sec. I don't know if you guys can still still stream it, see my screen, but my monitor went out for a second. It's still showing up for us, Paul. So it went away oh, for just a second, good. but it's back in live. Okay, well, that's not live for me. <laughs> but uh, and it doesn't help you navigate around. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of one thing you do need if you uh, want to be good at you know design is uh, have a monitor. So just being able to see your work is helpful. But check this out. Let's go beyond because again, you do have to pay, and we can look at licensing that image. Let me show you something else. This is absolutely free. Going into assets, you know, the, the fonts. I can add fonts, again, for free as a Creative Cloud member, if you will. Technically not free, but you don't have to pay anymore. You can have a zillion fonts in here. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to go into market. So check this out. If I did want to use a tree, I could do a search on a tree, and I can add that to my adventure project like I'm doing right now. These are free assets in Creative Cloud market that you could use. See, look, here it is. Wait for it. That will pop up, and I can start using it. I am broadcasting my screen as well and just trying to pull down assets, so that's why this might take a second. Okay. 
So whether I'm using this tree or another tree, because I got this one the same way as well. Let's just drag that on. See, oh, there it is. That is a complex tree. Look at that. So here's my tree, guys. And rather than using these images, I could use this tree just by dragging it on to that uh, to that asset to that uh, um, uh, chart. Okay, and there it is. Now this is following data. Okay, so I can edit this data actually on Creative Cloud. Now you don't. You could edit it, or you can have somebody else edit it because we're kind of separating the data from uh, the design. Okay? So that's what's happening now. I'm sorry this is kind of slow, but uh, it's going to open up in a new browser that particular um, data for that, uh, for that image. Right? If I click it again, it's going to open up two instances. How many of you have done that? I know I have plenty. But and just a shameless self-plug, like on my, on my site I talk about this as well since I'm waiting for this to pop up in a browser. Uh, a lot of this content is actually on my site, paultranny.com, videos on how to do this. All right, so here it is. We'll see the graphics show up uh, and render out. I can change the data. So I want the first one to be maybe five times larger. Let's you know, insert an additional row, for instance. Let's just, uh, you know, make this new row 0.2. So one's really large, one's really small, and then the last one's just 0.5. So I can go back to the chart data, you can see it right there. I can stretch those trees, doesn't look good. You basically have, have that sort of control, scale proportionally, or even adjust in a freeform way. So this mimics the data uh, that uh, is going on uh, for, this, uh, for this file. So that data, of course, could be entered in in a browser, but if I go back to data, check this out, I could get that XX, X, I can get that data from somewhere else and load it in. Okay, so that's what I've done. There's my data. I can click Save. It's going to save that content, and it's going to come back here, and it's going to be reflected back on this asset as soon as it's updated as well. So that's charts in Illustrator. I'm going to move on. Let's quit out, quit out of that. Let's talk about two more things, technically three, but let's talk about a couple more things. I'm going to just launch Lightroom. Actually, no. I'm going to launch Muse, okay? Because, actually, no, I'm going to launch InDesign. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm trying to stay on this path of creating graphics and then going into more of a sort of a print publication that you're making. So in your print publication, you know, you're going to create the layout as you'd expect. It's all pretty straightforward there. Okay, but I want to go beyond that because I want to – those assets were updated, by the way. Uh, I want to be able to publish content online because a lot of InDesign users want to go online, but we don't want to sacrifice the integrity of our design. Okay, so here what I, here's what I have created. And I wanted this to pop up as well because anytime you're using fonts in Creative Cloud, if somebody else has Creative Cloud, it's just going to say, oh no, here's your fonts, no problem. You know, here's your missing fonts since, you were, uh, since the, that person was using Creative Cloud fonts or Typekit fonts which is available through Creative Cloud, you could use them and that will update them. Okay, in this case for this design, you know, I can move around content and you know, I have full control for my print layout. But the great thing is, is I can go beyond print and if I want to publish this online, it's really this easy. In fact, it's right up here. Publish online. Selecting that publish online icon, publishing it out. This is going to be available as a link for the rest of the world to review. So if you're doing a, if you're doing a print layout and you want your boss to approve it, or you just want to show it off to all your friends, you have that capability in InDesign. This is huge and something that we just have not talked about enough because this is kind of groundbreaking. you know. Um, and you'll see it here in a second. Oh, by the way, so it's uploading it. It's saying, hey, you know what, you can go ahead and close uh, and uh, just kind of continue working. But I did want to show you this is a little more tricky, guys. Check this out. There's these motion paths because I'm like, hey, you know what? 
online isn't a print brochure. It's not static. I can add all that fun stuff to it. This happens to be a video. This green line means there's a motion path, so it's going to be moving. Okay, so there's all this really compelling content, and you can find it if I go down to uh, interactive. A bunch of this interactive content has already been added. Okay, so I encourage you to check those out. But the short of it is, if I go into publish online, we can still see it working <laughs> away. Uh, but I have that interactive content added. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. It looks like I, I think Clint and others are kind of answering questions, which is awesome. Uh, uh, Jenny actually answer, asked a question about how do you use libraries if you don't have Internet access. It actually will have those assets available to you, but it's not going to be able to update them. So they're going to be available offline. And anytime I, anytime I use an asset from my library, what's happening here is it's just it's putting a copy of it in here. It's connecting it, okay? So it's connected here, but it's it's actually embedded. So if I open up this file again, it'll just check to see if it's updated, okay? So that's what happens. Uh, so if somebody's using um, and honestly, if you want to break the connection of this particular snorkel from the asset, you can do that as well by selecting embed. So you can embed that content if you want to break that connection, for instance. All right, guys. All right, Jenny, cool. Uh, so here it is. Uh, here's, I'm going to copy that link. I'm going to view this document. Again, just went from InDesign directly to, uh, to a web browser, and here it is. It's beautiful. So if you could imagine this being your project, being able to jump in and page through those different pages, we'll see content slide out, and we can see those videos. Pretty darn cool, huh? Are you not impressed with this? I'm so impressed with this. I think it's so awesome. I'm going to share it on Twitter right now. So by all means, uh, project. And the uh, hashtag is soup chat. Uh, uh, and this is the InDesign. Publish online during our soup chat. Uh, there it is. So follow me on Twitter. Follow that hashtag. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, it gives me a shortened URL. But nonetheless, I just tweeted that out so you guys could see that live because I think that's really powerful. Uh, it's it's a, it's 12:45. Um, I definitely need to show you just two more things really fast because this will save the day for you for a lot of people. If you're not aware of Muse, well, let me. Uh, <laughs> Let me introduce you to your new best friend. Hey, Jake. Jake Butters, thank you for the profile picture, buddy. Awesome. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of Muse, but if you ever wanted to create a website uh, but didn't want to write any code, or you're just in a rush, you can do that using Muse. So literally, you jump in. You can add you know, whatever content you want. It's all pretty straightforward. Uh, it's like what you see is what you get with this stuff. It's pretty, pretty easy. You have fonts available to you. So this might be my home page for instance. I'm just creating this color box. I can have my about page you know, about this project. Here's another color box. Please forgive me for uh, just not putting any design in this. But I can make as many of these pages as I want. Contact, that's the whole idea. And I have this master page. Works as expected. If I open up the widgets library, let's drop on say this horizontal menu, boom, there it is. Oh look, thank you very much. You already labeled that, home, about, contact. And hey, guess what? It's all linked together. So if I preview this, it's actually publishing it, and now I've like, I have this all working. So I could go from the home page to the about page. This is the fastest and easiest way to make a website, giving you full creative control, just like I've done here with this site. Uh, Again, it's more about biking, but in general, this kind of shows the power of what you can do. As I scroll down, you have those scroll motion effects. 
which look really nice. You can see obviously well laid out and you can get into you know uh, products or, or features or anything like that because you can add slideshows and different things as well. All right, so hopefully that, oh yeah, and contact form, such a pain, right? Contact form will like make your brain hemorrhage, I think. It's just, it hurts. Uh, but when it comes to, this actually won't show up in this preview mode because it needs to be uploaded. But if you wanted to add a contact form to your snazzy website, as you can see here, uh, it's literally just jumping in here. Let's make a simple contact form. You're welcome, world, right? It's that easy, guys. I don't know. I like it because I know it's been so painful for me in the past, and hopefully you appreciate Muse. And uh, uh, that's even my email address, and I'm not scared to show it. All right, so feel free. Uh, last thing I promise, I'm, uh, I, I, <laughs> I promise, I, uh, let me just do this one more thing. Uh, in Lightroom, let's not forget about Lightroom sort of being our heavy hitter for content. I saw Jake Butters was on the line, Lightroom Master. You, you think you might create a sucky photo like this one, just one fancy uh, um, enhancement. I want it to be clear. Well, I can remove the haze as I take the haze out of that image. So there's plenty of that Adobe magic in there that I can impress, impress you with. Uh, but all in all, uh, let's not forget about Lightroom and the many features that I did not cover. Uh, my apologies to all the, everybody internally at Adobe who worked so hard on this stuff that I didn't even get to show. But uh, I'm going to wrap up because, um, and yeah, because uh, yeah, I want to give uh, time for questions, although we do have a Q&A after this as well. Uh, so if you guys Thanks have so questions. I'm also reading the chat, if that's all right. Um, looks like a lot of questions have been answered. Okay, yeah, that's so great, Paul. We have been working hard on the back end to answer questions as they come in. So we really appreciate okay. uh, the help of all the back end hands working hard to get those answered. Um, I would love to take a couple of minutes just to talk about the Adobe Creative Cloud offer that's available. And then we can dive into more questions. So feel free to keep shooting them at us and we'll do our best to keep answering them. And then for additional ones, again, we have that soup chat immediately following this event in our forums where you can continue to ask questions. So Paul, if you don't have anything else that you need to share on screen right now, we can have you go ahead and stop sharing and we'll jump back to the slides so I can show a little bit about how to access it, what the offer looks like, and um, you know, answer questions about the program specifically if people have any. So with TechSoup there are two programs right now. There is an Adobe Creative Cloud discount offer, and a donation program. For those of you who maybe accessed the donation program in the past, or maybe tried to access the donation program in the past and found that your organization was not eligible, well, the rules have changed for the Adobe Creative Cloud offer and they've opened up. For those products on our site that are still listed as donations, which I'll point these to. So for Acrobat, if you want the installed Acrobat, or Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements, or Acrobat for Mac, those are still part of our traditional donation program that has the same eligibility requirements that it had previously. So if you were eligible for those before, you're still eligible for those to access those as installed desktop products. If you were not eligible for those, the latest offer is this Adobe Creative Cloud Complete Plan One Year Individual Membership, and it gets you access to discounted rates. The admin fee is $5 and gets you access to a discounted rate of $239. I can't read my tiny print there for the first year, uh, which is I believe 60% off of the retail price. So a huge discount on that. And this is wide open. So if you are in TechSoup's, uh, if you are already registered with us and you found that you weren't eligible for these other programs in the past, that likely no longer applies and you can access this Creative Cloud plan. And so this is a subscription plan that you pay directly to Adobe.com. That $5 admin fee is just validating that you are part of our system and that you have access to those discounted rates. And then you pay that directly to Adobe.com for the actual subscription. So it includes – this is just some of the programs that we highlighted here today. Paul took the time to show us a little bit of Photoshop briefly jumped into Lightroom right at the end there, Illustrator, InDesign, and he also showed Muse which we didn't list out here which is the super easy to use web building application. But it includes all of these other things too plus more. And the one subscription rate gets you access to all of those. 
The uh, plan is a one-year individual membership. We currently don't have team memberships. So if that's something that you're using or hoping to use, we don't actually have that available at this time. So it's an individual membership access, 60% off of the current market rate. Second year, 40% off the current market rate thereafter. That $5 membership fee uh, or $5 admin fee to TechSoup gets you access to that discount. And this applies to all budget sizes are eligible. All 501c3 organizations and public libraries are eligible, which was not the case with our prior uh, specific donation program for the installed desktop products. Um, and then you can also request an unlimited number of individual memberships. So if you have a designer, you have a volunteer, you have a marketing person, and they all need access to it, they can all get individual memberships. Um, I have a slide just highlighting some myth, myths here that are debunked, and I don't want to spend too much time reading through it, but I just wanted to highlight that even though these are cloud programs that sync and have all of those great features of collaboration, uh, many of them run directly still on your computer. So you don't have to be connected to the Internet all the time. That came up as a question in chat. For some of the library things, uh, to share libraries, you do still have to be online to actually get those libraries to sync. But you don't actually have to do that to just use these programs. So if you're designing something and you don't want to be connected to the Internet, you're still running it directly on your computer, and you're just syncing with the cloud to collaborate, share, get those libraries connected. Um, you only need to be online to install your software. And then you do need to check in regularly uh, and, and go online. I believe it's once every 30 days if you're a monthly subscriber. It's once every 90 days if you do an annual subscription. Um, if I'm incorrect on that, somebody chat out in the window, but I, I believe that's correct. Um, you continue to have access to the files that you save on your computer. So it's not like you put them in the cloud and then if you're disconnected from the Internet that you have no access. You can have them still saved to your workstation and installed and accessible locally. And your creative files will stay on your computer unless you choose to sync them to the Creative Cloud. So you can choose to sync or not sync based on your privacy, if you have uh, documents that you create that have uh, regulations that you need to, you know, privacy things that need to be followed or compliance things. You can choose to keep them not synced with the cloud, or you can choose to sync them if it's convenient for you to be able to get those files off to a printer for your collateral documents, your invitations, your postcards, your newsletter. Uh, if you have a mailer that you send out, you can choose to sync them to make it available to the folks that may need it, or you can choose to keep them on your own desktop private. So that's just a little bit about that. I see lots of other questions coming in the chat. And so I'll start to grab those in a second. And I see folks on the back end already trying to respond. But I wanted to sh share some additional resources. These will be in the slide deck that you'll get access to in the follow-up email. So I have links to Paul's YouTube channel which has fantastic videos. Lots of little short videos showing very specific tips and tricks and cool things you can do. It's a treasure trove. And I loved watching a lot of them before prepping for this webinar. Paul's website, and again Paul, following Paul for the latest Adobe news on his Twitter. And then we have links to tutorials for the specific programs that we covered a little bit today. We tried to highlight the ones that we know meet the demands of the majority of the use cases that nonprofits come to us with. They come saying they need help designing websites, brochures, annual reports, newsletters. Um, those are the primary things that we are told that you are using. So we wanted to highlight the tools that would most apply to those. But we know that some of you are also creating amazing video content or audio content and podcasts. And so all of those other tools are available too. And there's a lot of resources. Uh, Adobe TV has its own channel with tons of resources and videos and clips to help you learn how to use those. And then I also wanted to just quickly highlight uh, the Creative Cloud membership link, uh, the donation program. So for those ones, those organizations that qualify for the actual donated desktop installed products, the three that we still have on our site, a link to those, and some of the resources we've created that just explain more about the program and how to use it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and keep this screen up. And that little bit.ly link at the bottom is where you can continue to ask questions in that soup chat that starts in just a few minutes here. But while we do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and ask a couple of questions. So Donna asks, 
And I think this is a question that a lot of people feel when they see just the huge amount of stuff available in Adobe Creative Cloud. Donna asks, my main concern and excitement is the overwhelming amount of features. How do you learn about them? How do you learn to use them all? Paul, what do you think is the best place for somebody to start with learning about Adobe Creative Cloud? Yeah, so you know, I think what typically people do is they go on YouTube, and I will as well. Um, I, I typically, but not that I'm suggesting it, but I use my videos there, so please go there. Uh, there is something called Creative Cloud Learn, which is hard to get to, but anytime you launch an Adobe app, there's links to learn new things. So that's a great area, and the reason that's good is because we, you know, we pay people to make that content, so the quality is higher. And let's not forget some of the paid services like lynda.com. Uh, there are free videos there and just really high quality, and uh, that's, that's where I typically go. And that's great. I, so and I, go ahead. No, I, I was, um, maybe I'm going to answer another question that you might have queued up or something I wanted to clarify. Um, but when you, when you publish online, that publishes obviously to like a, an, a, our Adobe hosted service. That's where it lives. Um, you know, there's no current way to sort of extract that content and put it on your own website. It's just a link. So you don't pay for hosting for that. Same thing with news. If I publish a site out there, I'm going to get a, you know, an Adobe URL, but you could customize that. So with Creative Cloud, you get up to five hosted sites where you can customize the URL. So I just wanted to point out those two things. That's great and helpful. And, and we did have people asking where it lives. And you know, Ad Adobe is doing a lot, I think, to ensure that stuff in the cloud is managed well and secure. And all of, all of these big companies have great privacy policies and are working hard to make sure that anything that you put in the cloud and that's hosted there is secure. So just keep that in mind. And again, for those of you that may have uh, documents that you'd create or resources that you'd create that have privacy regulations about where it can live and whether it can be in the cloud or has to be locally stored. And you know, you have that option that you can keep them locally stored. We are just about out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and move us forward quickly into you know, just asking you, our participants, to let us know one thing that you learned today that you're either going to try to implement or maybe one action you're going to take. Maybe it's going onto Adobe.com and finally activating the account that you requested previously. Or maybe it's uh, doing one of the skills, getting rid of the tightrope in your own images, for those of you who have been trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, let us know what you've learned because that helps us understand where the value comes from and what we can spend more time doing in our webinars coming up. And we'd also like you to share any of this information with your colleagues and friends who may benefit. Thanks so much to Paul for taking the time today, and for everybody on the back end who has been helping plow through questions. I'd like to invite you to join us for our upcoming webinars and events. Uh, as mentioned, we have a live soup chat on Adobe Creative Cloud taking place in our forums. And I'll just show that little bit.ly link once again, and we'll chat it out in the window so you can get there directly if you have questions we didn't have time to get to. Coming up next week we'll be talking about navigating payment processing for nonprofits. So if you are looking for tools to help you uh, with credit card payments and taking donations, uh, whether it be online or in person at events. Join us for that because we'll be talking about the different options out there. Following that we'll be talking about how to crowdfund for libraries. So if you're joining us today from a library, this webinar is for you. And then we'll talk about Microsoft's OneNote and how to use that as a great collaboration, brainstorming, and note-taking tool that many of you already have on your desktop. And then in August we'll be talking about accomplishing more with social media. We hope you'll join us for more of those events. You can find all of them and our archives on our website at TechSoup.org slash events webinars. You can join us and connect with us at TechSoup Global, TechSoup.org, on our Facebook, and on our Twitter. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you Paul for your help today in sharing a little highlight of all the great things that we can do with Adobe Creative Cloud. We hope you'll come back to learn more as we will certainly have more on this topic and the specific programs in the Creative Cloud coming down the pike. Thank you so much to Sun, uh, Corinna, Clint, Terry, who am I missing, Ali, who all helped on the back end in answering questions. And thank you to you, our audience, for joining us today. 
Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank ReadyTalk who provides the use of this platform for us to present these webinars on a regular basis. When you close out, please take a moment to complete the post-event survey that pops up so we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thank you all so much and have a terrific day. Bye-bye.